All right, I want to welcome those that are joining us by uh, television, by radio, and by live streaming. If you are watching this on TV, call someone, tell them what channel this is on. If you're watching by or listening by radio, uh, give somebody a call and tell them uh, where you're listening, what radio station you're listening to right now. You can also get uh, the full uh, service uh, by going on to www.theshepherdshouse.net, and we've got links uh, there to YouTube, uh, also where you can watch the live streaming and so on, and uh, we've also got uh, podcasts and iTunes. It's got uh, some of the messages that's been downloaded on those also. Uh, so anyway, join us that way, and we appreciate that. If you're watching on Facebook, why, uh, feel free to share this on your timeline so that other people will be able to connect with our ministry and with what the Lord is doing. I've got a message today that I'm going to be preaching. It's titled, Finding the Way. Finding the Way. There's a lot of people that are trying to find the right way, and they've missed the, wrong, the, the right way, and they found a lot of crooked paths. They found a lot of detours. They found a lot of things, uh, amen, that partially helps in some situations, but it hasn't brought the glory of God, and there has not been a change in their life, and their situations that they're going through are not any different than what they were before. I want to encourage everybody to find Jesus, if you don't know him, as your personal Savior. Put your faith and your trust in him, not in a TV evangelist, not in a pastor somewhere, not in someone that it's a good teacher, even though we need to esteem them uh, with double honor, the Bible says. I understand that. But nevertheless, uh, amen, our faith and our trust uh, needs to be in Jesus. And we need to know that we have found uh, the right way. Nothing any more disturbing than to follow directions that somebody gave you and try to go into the town, uh, amen, and you think, I can't wait, uh, and one more mile, I'll be in Louisville, Kentucky, and when you get to the city limits, it says, Welcome to Scottsville. My, you're going to get surprised. Amen. Or you wind up in Rooster Run. Amen. Or Fountain Run. Amen. Instead of Louisville, you're going to say, I followed the instructions that that preacher gave me. I worked hard to get here, but when I got here, it sure wasn't Louisville, Kentucky. I can tell you that right now. It's a Scottsville, or it's Fountain Run, or it's Rooster Run. Amen. Or one of those chicken bristle or somewhere, amen, and some of y'all around this area knows what I'm talking about, man, you're going to really be discouraged. You're going to be mad at somebody because that they didn't uh, give you the proper uh, proper uh, instructions and the proper directions. Uh, how many has ever went through a drive through and didn't get what you want? Uh, the only ones that hadn't done that are the ones that's never been through a drive through Amen. If you go through a drive through and get what you've ordered, uh, you better shout because it don't happen very often. Amen. Uh, because you have to deal with other humans uh, that are as goofy as we are. And we're all under stress. Uh, they're in a hurry to get you fed. You're in a hurry to get it in your hand so you can squall tires uh, and get home and prop your feet up and rest and do nothing. Amen. So therefore, everybody is in a hurry. Amen. So therefore, amen, you don't get what you ordered. Amen. But there's one thing about it. Amen. If you wait till the end of time and don't make sure you've got the right thing, amen, you're going to be worse, amen, than going through the drive through and order a chicken sandwich, amen, and wind up, amen, with a hamburger, amen, with cheese on it. You're going to really be discouraged, amen. Instead of getting a chicken sandwich and fries, you got a hamburger and green peas. You're going to be angry. You're going to be upset. Amen. And when you make it into the town you thought was Louisville and you found out that you had just made it in to the outskirts of Chicken Bristle, amen, or Scottsville, you're going to be disappointed because you're two hours away, amen, or more uh, from where you're supposed to be and you missed your appointed day. 
and your appointed time. So we need to know that we have found the way. And there's a lot of things, uh, amen, along the way, amen, that can distract us. Uh, and the devil a lot of times got some detour signs up, uh, amen, where he says, uh, amen, that I must uh, detour or you must detour. Uh, but sometimes we're better off, uh, amen, to sit down, wait upon the Lord till he gets the bridge fixed than to detour and wind up lost. Now, that'll preach. Amen. We need to make sure we found the right way. Amen. Those that are Christians, uh, amen, we have found the way. If you really are a Christian, and when there's people that goes under the title of Christian, uh, amen, there's a whole lot of people that tries to fly that flag. Uh, amen. And some of them have never been born again by the Spirit and the power of God. Uh, amen. That claims to be a Christian. Uh, we need to make sure that we have found the way, amen, and finding the way is the most important thing uh, because there's so much stuff out there. I've shared this a lot of times. Uh, I never leave the parking lot of any restaurant without going through the bag, amen, so I can go right back inside and change, uh, amen, what they put in there that was wrong. Amen. You don't ever need to listen to a preacher without taking your Bible and see if you can follow along with him. Amen. It don't matter who it is. And you need to pray for the Holy Spirit to guide you and to direct you. Amen. In all that you do. Amen. We're in a time right now, amen, where people, amen, are so unsettled. Many are so unhappy. Many are looking for something, and they are trying to find it, amen, and they haven't found the right thing. I'm going to read in Psalms here about the psalmist David and how that David had found the right way, amen, after a while, but part of the time he took a detour when he looked at uh, Beersheba, amen, upon the roof uh, top, uh, amen, when he done things, uh, amen, that was out of the will of God, but he found the right way, and he done the right thing, uh, amen, we need to find the right way, get back on the right course, uh, if the wind uh, has blowed your ship off a course, or if you took a detour sign, Amen, uh, and detoured, uh, amen, around, uh, amen, the wrong direction. Psalms 30, verse 1 says, I will extol thee, O Lord, for thou hast lifted me up, and hast not made my foes to rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cry unto thee, and thou hast healed me. O Lord, thou hast brought up my soul from the grave. Thou hast kept me alive that I should not go down to the pit. Sing unto the Lord, O you saints of his. Give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. For his anger endureth but a moment. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. And in my prosperity, I said, I shall never be moved. Lord, by thy favor, thou hast made my mountain to stand strong. Thou didst hide thy face, and I was troubled. I cried to thee, O Lord, and unto the Lord I made supplication. What profit is there in my blood when I go down to the pit? Shall the dust praise thee? Shall it declare thy truth? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me, Lord. Be thou my helper. Thou hast turned me from my mourning uh, into dancing. Thou hast put my sackcloth and girded me with gladness to the end that my glory may sing praise to thee and not be silent. O Lord, my God, I will give thanks unto thee forever. 
praise his holy name. How many is glad that we've got something to be thankful for today? Amen. We've got an opportunity to praise him. Hallelujah. Amen. We can't praise him from the grave. We've got to praise him while we're alive. Amen. We need to be thankful before the fact during the fact and after the fact, amen, of whatever it is, amen, in whatever circumstance, amen, that might be before us, whatever it is, amen, that's got us hung up in traffic, amen, give him honor, praise, and glory. Did you ever see anybody, amen, that got discouraged when they got hung up in traffic? There's been a few times, amen, if it wasn't for leaving my car, I'd have got out and walked the rest of the way to Louisville. I just didn't want to make everybody else mad and have to leave my car. That's the way that I felt. Amen. Did you ever get impatient? Amen. With things and with people. Amen. Did you ever see things? Amen. That got under your skin. Amen. They ain't nothing anymore. Amen. Discouraging. Amen. Than a responsible person. Amen. Being around. Amen. A whole area of drug heads. Amen. They can't organize anything. They can't do anything right. They can't remember anything. And they can't keep their mind on what they're doing. They'll try you nuts. Amen. You spend a whole day babysitting 60-year-old people and 40-year-old people. And at the end of the day, you thought if I had three adults, uh, amen, I could have done I wouldn't have done none of this. Amen. Do you ever get frustrated? Uh, amen. By dealing with stuff like that. Do you get frustrated dealing with your children uh, when you talk to them and talk to them and talk to them? Uh, amen. And they don't listen to a thing that you say. Amen. Do you ever get discouraged with them? How about a spouse that you talk to and talk to and you can't get them to listen to what you're saying? Amen. It frustrates you. But while we're stalled in traffic, uh, amen, on the road to life, uh, amen, we need to praise God. Uh, amen. Spiritually speaking, because we'll get there if we faint not. And if we don't jump out of the car and decide I'm going to hoof it, amen, the rest of the way to town, amen, just wait till the traffic moves and God through his spirit, amen, opens up the traffic and the construction and, uh, and opens up the bridges, amen, so you can pass on through. The most of the time, you will find out there was nothing there, amen, to hinder the traffic. No wrecks, no construction, and you're scratching your head. Why did we sit here for five minutes uh, and then do five mile an hour for five miles uh, when there's not an accident uh, and there's no ambulance, no police car? There's no reason anywhere for the traffic to be stalled. But I had to sit and I had to wait uh, with a load on me, with an urgency in my spirit. Uh, amen. Knowing I had too much to do and too far to go to be stalled uh, in the, on the road to life. Uh, but we'll find ourselves there sometimes. Uh, amen. Verse 5 says, uh, For his anger endureth but a moment. In his favor is life. Uh, weeping may endure for a night, uh, but joy cometh in the morning, if we'll hold on, amen, and not get weary and well doing. Mark chapter number 12 now, verse 28. And one of the scribes came, and having heard them reasoning together, and perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, which is the first commandment of all? And Jesus answered him. The first of all commandments is, Hear, O house of Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is namely this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. Can I stop and teach just a moment right here? Not to have any other gods, amen, before us. Amen, but we'll have the fruits of loving the Lord more than anything else in the world. And people will see 
that fruit, amen, coming from us. The second one is to love thy neighbor as thyself. Or Brother Jimmy, who is my neighbor? That's the one across the street and the one that lives in Pakistan. Amen. The one that lives in Asia. The one that lives in Africa. Amen. Wherever that they might be. That's who your neighbor is. Amen. Some people think it's the one that lives in the community and the one that lives, uh, amen, across the street from you that you borrow sugar from. Every now and then, uh, amen, or a cup of milk. Uh, that's not your neighbor. Amen. That's your sugar daddy. Hey man, your your neighbor is whomsoever will. Hey man, everybody, everywhere, all over the planet. Hey man, and when you love your neighbor as yourself. When you see the kids in Africa, amen, not having any clothing, and you get a burden, uh, amen, to send them babies, uh, amen, something to wear. I'm going to tell you what, they sent back some pictures this week, and I know this don't mean anything to a lot of people. So those that it does mean something to, you just be real quiet while we praise the Lord. Amen. But uh, they sent back some pictures, uh, amen, of the clothes that we sent to Africa this last week. Of uh, them little kids over there, them orphans, uh, wearing them clothes and a grinning from ear to ear and a smiling and a waving in those clothes that we rolled up real tightly and shoved in boxes uh, and sent over there, sacrificed to get enough money up, uh, amen, to be able to, uh, to pay the freight uh, to get it over there. I'm going to tell you something, folks. It was Christmas in July, amen, like or you had August this year, amen, it was really rewarding, uh, amen, I can't feed them all, uh, I can't clothe them all, but if I could, there wouldn't be one of them in any country that didn't have a pair of shoes on. Well, Brother Jimmy, why don't you take care of these over here? I am, they're taxing me to death. Y'all getting that? Hey Amen. The government stepped in, wants to rule everything. Uh, hey Amen. The tears and give everything away, and we're paying taxes for it. Uh, I'm uh, helping them really good. Uh, hey Amen. If you want help in America, get you an address. Uh, hey Amen. And stay put, and the government will take care of you. Hey Amen. In other countries, the government's broke. Hey Amen. This is going to be if they don't keep. Hey Amen, you folks that are really intelligent, how many knows that 40% of the people can't continue to feed 60%? Hey Amen, uh, hey Amen, see, I done figured that out, and I'm not even a politician. Uh, I wish to goodness that the politicians could figure that out. Uh, hey Amen, we'd probably get some changes made. Uh, hey Amen, uh, uh, listen, uh, 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 but the greatest, uh, uh, second greatest commandment is loving our neighbor as ourselves. Verse number 32, and the scribe said unto him, and when I listen to the word scribe, uh, amen, I think about that religious person uh, sitting in the modern day church of today as being like that scribe, uh, amen, that thinks they know it all, uh, amen, but they're full of everything except the Spirit. And the scribe said unto him, well, Master, Thou hast said the truth, for there is one God, and there's none other but he. And to love him with all the heart, and with all thy understanding, and with all the soul, and with all the strength, and to love thy neighbor, his neighbor as himself, is more than all the burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he had answered discreetly, he said unto him, Thou art not far from the kingdom of God, and no man after that durst ask him any question. Let me stop right there because I don't want to fail to come back to this. Now, Brother Jimmy, if he understood and he did what the Lord was saying, why did the Lord say you're not far from the kingdom of God? Because he hadn't got born again yet, but he's getting close. Amen. He had got to understanding. Uh, he had caught the precept, uh, amen, of knowing what it was like to put God first uh, and to love your neighbor as yourself. Uh, amen. He could understand how that God would choose, uh, amen, for us to be that way. Uh, amen. And the Lord said, uh, amen, that you're not far from the truth. You're not far from receiving that. You're getting really close. Uh, amen. But the problem with close is uh, it only counts in horse. 
of uh, shoes and hand grenades. Uh, amen. If you get close in horseshoes, you can still get a point uh, as long as you are touching another horseshoe. If you get close in a hand grenade, you can throw it in a corner of that room and it'll still get you over here in this other corner. Amen. Close counts. Uh, you don't have to have it in your pocket. Uh, but if you're going to get salvation, you can't get close to Jesus. You better get him inside your heart, not close by. Amen. There's been people that's come close to the Lord. Amen. The Lord dealt with their heart. There's people that come close to the Lord because they heard the word uh, and they believed. Uh, there's some that come close to the Lord. They heard the Lord uh, uh, and they heard the word rather. Uh, amen. And they ran from the Lord. Uh, they came close. Uh, but those that accepted and received his word uh, invited him to come into their hearts. Uh, amen. He gave us power to become the sons of God, the children of God, amen, and now therefore, amen, we have, amen, uh, this great airship, amen, through Jesus Christ, amen, we are now an heir to God, praise his name, amen, through the blood of Jesus and a joint heir with Christ, that means that Jesus will allow us to have everything that he has, amen, we are joint heirs, there's a long message in this, amen, of being connected. Uh, finding the way. Uh, I don't know if I'll get it all preached today or not, uh, but when you find the way and you don't get close to Jesus, uh, but you get him in your heart, uh, instead of having him close by like a hand grenade or playing horseshoes, uh, you found the way and God, uh, amen, shall make a way where there seems like that there is no way. Amen. We'll be reading here in a little bit some things. Uh, amen. That's going to show you where the prosperity preaching's at uh, and where people are being sucked in. Uh, amen. Listen, just like uh, a cyclone. Uh, amen. Uh, drawing in the ships uh, in the middle of the ocean uh, and taking them to the bottom uh, and leaving them in pieces. Uh, amen. That's what uh, amen. false teachings are doing today. Uh, straight is a gate and there is a way which leadeth unto life and few there be that finds it. Amen. Finding the way. Finding the right way. Amen. There's some that's found a way. Amen. In the movement. And that movement is well rewarding to the flesh. It feels good. It looks good. It sounds good. And there's many people that are in that movement. Amen. But it don't mean that it's good. I've used this illustration before. And I'm going to use it again. There's nothing any more upsetting than to see a load of cattle go down the interstate with their heads sticking out the window, taking in that air and a smile on their face like, man, we have got it made, not realizing they're headed to a slaughterhouse. Amen. There's a lot of people, uh, amen, that's found a way. They're happy with what they've got. They're happy with their church affiliation. Uh, they're high happy with connecting to a ministry that they've connected with. Uh, amen. They're satisfied, uh, amen, with what that they've got. Uh, amen. They don't realize that they've never been born again by the Spirit and the power of God. Uh, they've been moved by a motivational speaker. Uh, they've been touched, uh, amen, by somebody else's faith. Uh, but they themselves, uh, have no experience themselves. Amen. They themselves has never met the king of glory at an altar of prayer and prayed through and died out to sin and died out to the flesh at an altar of prayer and let God regenerate, bring us to life in the spirit and cause us to be a new creature in Christ Jesus. Amen. Go into an altar. Amen. Destitute and broken. Amen. With sin in our life. Amen. Bound to hell and getting up. Amen. Saying, I got it. I got it. I got it. I met the king of glory and he washed away all my sins. And I'm free. And I can't wait till I get to see him. Amen. One day after a while. And you come out. Amen. And you love. Amen. Your neighbor. You love your brother. You love your sister. You love your mother in law and your father in law. Amen. You love the preacher. Amen. You love the one you work for. Mm -hmm. 
Amen. You love the ones that you work with. Amen. We're in a society today I've never seen as much drama and so much hatred. Amen. So much judgmentalism going on in all of my life. Amen. This has gone to tattletale on that one and somebody else don't think that and over there. Amen. Is doing the things that they ought to be doing and I'm fixing to have a meeting with some of my Indians and I'm fixing to thin some out if they don't straighten up. Amen. I've heard all the griping I'm going to listen to. Get right or get out. Amen. Listen, we... Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. It's bad when you work for a preacher. Amen. Because I don't put up with that mess very long. Amen. Stomach it for a little while. Man, if I could just get them to get saved. Amen. They come in saying, let me give you a hug. I ain't got to see you since yesterday. And I'm going to look over all your faults. If there's a crumb on the back left table, if you left a bottle of ketchup out, it don't make no difference because when we get to heaven, there won't be no tables or no ketchup. I'll clean the stuff up myself. When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Amen. We'll come into the house of God. Amen. I've tried to preach to some of mine. Amen. Get saved, but they want to hold on to the devil and fight and squawk and complain. Man, it's almost like being in church. Amen. Being in a working place today. Oh, y'all didn't get that. Amen. Amen. People find fault. Amen. Point fingers one at another. All we need to do is love one another. Amen. And get the attitude that they ain't nobody any goofier than I am and you'll be in good shape. Amen. Get an attitude that there ain't one hip hypocrite I know of in the state of Kentucky, and I shaved that rascal this morning. I, amen. There ain't one hypocrite in the state of Kentucky, and I put Avon on her face this morning. I, if you're Pentecostal, you just looked and wish you had Avon. Whew. Just preach to all of you. Amen. That's a hypocrite I'm a talking to today. Amen. What I'm trying to tell you today is, uh, amen, listen, we need to love one another. Uh, and we get the spirit of Christ. Uh, you're not going to be looking down the end of your glasses and the end of your nose. Uh, amen. Saying you stink. Uh, amen. I brought this out in early service this morning. I'm sorry that you missed it. Uh, there ain't nothing any worse than a, a, a cattle farmer coming in uh, and saying, What's that smell? I smell hog poop. And, uh, and a pig farmer sitting on the other side, uh, he can't smell the hog poop. And he said, boy, somebody's got cow manure on their shoes. Uh, yeah, and you've got hog poop all over yours, but you can't smell it because you're used to it. Amen. Uh, that's the way that people is. Uh, amen. We want to look at somebody else's faults, uh, and we can't see our own ourselves. Oh, praise the Lord. Amen. Somebody run and get the door. All the oxygen just left. Amen. Chapter number 7 out of Matthew, verse 12 says, Therefore all things whatsoever you would that men should do to you, do you even so to them. For this is the law of of the prophets. This is the teachings of the prophets. Amen. Do to those others as you would have them do to you. Would you want that person that works for you to run to the boss and try to get you fired? Would you want that one uh, to talk about you and to run you down and to find every fault that you got? No, so you ought not to be doing that to them, right? Amen. I hope this gets out to some of the preachers and deacons and song leaders in some of these churches. Amen. Verse number 13. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Beware of the TV preachers. No, I'm sorry. <clears throat> I've got a blur. Let me get my glasses adjusted. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are lusting wolves, ravening wolves, wolves, amen, that appears to be out for your benefit, but all they want is what you will send in to them. And everything is about prospering. So with seed into this, and this is what God's going to do. My message today is, Give if you like it. If you don't, shut up. 
Amen. Amen. God, amen, is trying to get the word out. Amen. We need to be trying to say, get as many souls saved as we possibly can in the last days, not trying to get a bigger limousine and a greater ring for the preacher to wear and a brand new jet. Amen. I've seen them get on their uh, television and brag about, I just told my people that I needed a new jet. And I got another six and a half million dollar jet. Praise God. Now let me tell you how I done that. I just spent all my money down, liar. And God just sent it in, and I didn't hit a lick at nothing. And I told the people that I needed a new jet, and they just sent in millions of dollars. Uh huh. Yeah. I got some swamp land in Arizona, I'd like to say you too. Uh, now, that, I'm just stretching the truth. I don't own any property in Arizona. That's just an old saying. But what I'm saying is, uh, amen, that's some of the things uh, that they tell. My wife's getting pale. I know that I'm a preaching hard now. I can look at her when I know she's about ready to pass out. Uh, amen, I know it's time to move on. Amen, the prosperity wolves, amen, that are trying to fleece the flock. Verse 16, and ye shall, she's laughing now, ye shall know them by their fruits. Do, you, do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. How in the world are you going to know if that preacher is really a good preacher? Take his salary away for three or four years and see if he sticks with you. Hey, Amen. Brother Jimmy, was your salary cut out for three or four years or longer than that? <clears throat> they didn't cut it out. They just didn't have it to pay. And I just kept on preaching to them, skinning the hide every Sunday, telling them to repent and pay your tithes. Move up. Get closer to God. The altar's open. Don't be scared of the altar, but the Christians ought to learn to live on one somewhere. Amen. Praise the Lord. And God's paid everything off. Amen. We're beginning to gain, gain ground now. Amen. We're going to finally, sooner or later, we keep saving up money. We'll have enough money to put carpet in this thing that's 17 years old. Amen. Soon be 18 years old. Amen. We're going to recarpet this thing. Uh, amen. We finally got her paid off. We'll have enough money to do that. Every, even so, I'll read verse 16, uh, 17 again. Even so, every good tree bringing forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringing forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Uh, amen. Mm -mm. Verse 19. Every tree that bringeth not forth the good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire that is took out of position and thrown into hell. Are you getting an understanding? Verse 20, wherefore by the fruits ye shall know them. It's by their fruits, amen, ye shall know them. Straight is a gate and narrow is a way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that finds it. Amen. Finding the proper way, amen, without being detoured at the wrong place, amen, without being misled, amen, and, and, and I know there's people, amen, that started out the right way, and they lived a holy life, and they lived a life it was full of joy and compassion, and they were happy, and they got in behind one of them false teachers, uh, amen, that could teach, uh, amen, that you can live like a devil and still make it to heaven because God's grace uh, has covered your adultery and your lying and your whoremongering uh, and all those other things, and you don't have to repent, uh, amen, all of those things, uh, amen, where they've lied and they twisted the truth around, uh, amen, they've told you, amen, all you have to do is just believe in me and send money to me, and you'll make it to heaven. Amen. I hope that you'll send money in to support our TV ministry, but if you don't, you'll make it to heaven anyhow. There may be somebody else out there that'll miss it if you don't support it, but don't you send money, amen, expecting amen, to become rich. Amen, because you're not going to do it. Amen, when you learn that money means nothing to you, it's all about winning souls and supporting the things that's doing right and supporting the truth when that becomes number one, you'll look behind you and say, wow, I can't believe all the things that God's allowed me to have when I wasn't asking for anything. See the difference? Amen. Well, Brother Jimmy, I can tell you a time when I sent the money in to the preacher on television and I got me a check the next week. Yep, what you don't realize, it is mail for you sent the money into him. 
you know, the United Postal Service. Amen. It go across town in one day or two weeks. <laughs> I got people who works for the post office sitting right here, and they just die in life. They know it's the truth. Amen. He can get it the next day or two weeks later. Amen. Be right across the street from you. It's a whole lot faster, I can tell you that, to walk it across the street. Amen. Because it may wind up in Beijing before it ever gets to where you're at. Amen. Across the street for a week or two. Never know. Amen. But one thing you can count on, there's a judgment day coming one day after a while, and we're all going to have to face it. We need to make sure that we have found, amen, the right way. We better make sure, amen, that we know, amen, that we pass from death unto life now. We better make sure that we know we've been born of the Spirit and the power of God. You don't give into the ministry to get rich. You give into the ministry because God leads you to and because you believe in what you're supporting and you're trying to reach thousands of other people. Amen. Not trying to get something, amen, from your, for yourself. I wish to goodness, amen, that the American church could learn, amen, when you give in your tithes and your offerings into the church, it's not the lottery. Amen. You're giving, expecting nothing else in return. Well, Brother Jimmy, I expect the Lord to take care of me. I believe he'll take care of me too. But I'm also going to have to work, and I'm also going to have to manage my money, and I'm also going to have to do right. Amen. I'm also going to have to, amen, know, amen, in my heart that it came from God, and it did not come from anything that I did, amen, or the world did. It's obedience to Christ. Amen. It's what, amen, calls me to prosper. Amen. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Amen. Why can't we hear the voice of the Lord? Why can't we understand his word? Amen. You know why a lot of the churches can't prosper? Because you can't get them there long enough, amen, to teach them the full counsel of God. Amen. They can hear an evangelistic message because that's what they hear a lot of times on Sunday morning, but they're not there for the quality teaching, amen, and the Word of God, amen, on Sunday night and Wednesday night, and they miss out on a whole lot of things. Amen. God wants to teach us, amen, there's revelations, amen, in the Scripture, amen, that's brought forth through the Spirit, Amen, right before us. Amen, right here uh, this last Wednesday night. Amen, the Lord gave me a revelation. Amen, through Bible study. Amen, right there, right in the middle of teaching it. Amen, saw something in the scripture that I never saw before in the last 35 years plus preaching. It was right there all along, but it was revealed to me through the Spirit at the proper time, at the proper place, amen, in my ministry, in my life, amen, when God opened the doors, he revealed that to me, and I received it, and I hadn't saw it before, and no, it wasn't about me getting rich, amen, and becoming a millionaire. Amen. Didn't have anything to do with money at all. What it was about was where Jesus, amen, had been resurrected from the grave. Amen. He went for them 40 days here upon the earth and taught, and only the chosen ones, not everyone, got to see Jesus. Only those that were chosen to. And man, that hit me like a ton of bricks. And the Lord gave me a whole lot of thoughts, amen, upon that, that I hadn't saw in years. Amen. Man, I had people complimenting uh, and commenting on uh, Facebook and stuff. See, when you come uh, and you receive all of it, uh, you don't miss those things. While those are staying at home and don't think it's necessary, that thinks that all the moving of the Spirit uh, went out when the last apostle died, could have been here last Wednesday night, and they could have felt it and seen it uh, and experienced it, uh, amen, if they'd have been here. Oh, excuse me, I forgot where I was at for a minute. Hey, man, I got so busy preaching, I, I forgot that I was preaching. What we need, uh, amen, is the full counsel of God and to receive everything. We don't need to be hooked up, uh, amen, to a bunch of ravening wolves. Uh, amen, I can hear them when they get in the pulpit, amen, by the way that they preach. I've had them come in here uh, a time or two, and by the third time, and they got off on this mess, they ain't been back since, and they won't until they come and apologize and tell me they repented of things. I'm going to say this to the evangelists and to the pastors that's watching me by TV and listening by radio 
all around the world. I'm going to give you a little bit of advice. Take what God gives you. Be thankful for it. It's chicken one week and feathers the next. It's just the way that it's always been. Amen. Hold your chicken back and save it till next week because it's likely going to be feathers. Amen. And God will make a way for you. He always has and he always will. And if you let God make the way, he'll get you the Greyhound bus. Amen. He'll get you, amen, where he wants you to be and he will pay the way, amen, and the way that he leads people to give uh, and the doors that he shall open uh, when it's the right time uh, and don't have to come in uh, and suggest, uh, amen, what you're doing so you can get a bigger love offering. Uh, Amen. Most of the time, uh, amen, well, I, I try to take care of my guest preachers pretty good, amen, and do, amen, until they start trying to milk the congregation, and I don't care if you get a nickel then. I'm not going to withhold the offering, amen, but I'm not going to encourage people to give, and I'm not going to take none out of the church's treasury, uh, amen, to help support it either, amen, if they got that kind of an attitude, uh, amen, we need to, amen, Jesus said, freely you receive, uh, freely you give, uh, amen, it's no more plainer than that, uh, amen, don't charge for something uh, that you receive freely yourself, uh, amen, listen, the preachers are just sharing what they received uh, from Christ to other people. Living by example, amen, showing by principle, uh, amen, the principles of the Word of God and what God, uh, amen, is doing. I, I run across this little crunch, uh, amen, financial thing this last week. Uh, I, I didn't send money into a prosperity preacher, and I, I didn't, uh, uh, you know, go to calling people and asking them to give money or anything like that at all. I just run across a little snag, uh, amen, there in our business, uh, amen, before the week was over, God took care of it uh, and turned around and blessed, uh, and this is what what I done. I prayed. I said, Lord, you're going to have to take care of this. Amen. And this is what come to my mind. If you will believe your own preaching <laughs> and where you've told other people Amen, that God cannot lie and you cannot go under uh, because if you go under doing the principles and the teachings of the Word of God, then God shall have lied. And I cannot lie and I've never lied. Uh, amen, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Uh, amen, within two days' time, all of that was taken care of. Uh, amen, and, and then we had, uh, amen, extra abundance above. Uh, amen, what was needed. Uh, amen, something that hadn't happened in weeks. Amen. God will always take care of us if we'll stand on his word. Amen. Don't try to take the last nickel you got. Amen. And put it into the mailbox and mail it to some preacher somewhere because he suggested that's what you ought to do. What you ought to do is listen to the voice of God. Amen. Did you ever listen to them clowns real good? Amen. They've got one type of sermon right after another and every one starts walking you, amen, toward the same avenue. They start walking you toward the benefit of you giving and how you're going to get a whole bunch of money out of it. Amen. My ministry's different. I'm teaching you don't want anything, don't ask anything, amen, don't expect anything, amen, and then later on because you're geared and hooked to the Lord and you found your way, you'll look behind you and you'll shout and you'll, cry, you'll laugh and you'll cry over look what God gave me and I don't, don't even deserve it and I didn't ask for it. And Lord of the abundance and the blessings that you gave me because you gave me a heart to help other people uh, and to reach out and to give and not to receive uh, for myself. Amen. Many years ago, it's, it's easy to find the way and to start on the way and then miss the way after being on the way. Brother Jimmy, I don't believe it. I believe after I once get on the way uh, that I'll, I'll never get off that way. Uh, when does the devil die? Did y'all hear anything about that? I read the news and I, I seen the obituaries. I keep hoping, but poor old thing ain't even sick. Hey, man, I wish he'd have died yesterday. If he don't, I hope he dies tomorrow, today. If he don't, I, I'd kill him if the Lord let me. Hey, man, I'm kind of like a big old friend of mine had big old arms about that big around. Uh, hey, man, uh, from down in Allen County, Mr. Earl Tao, good Christian, Holy Ghost filled man. I'll tell you what, he was a real Christian. I really thought a lot of that man. Uh, hey, man, he told me one day, he was kind of talk kind of slow. He said, I wish the Lord would let me tie him to a tree over there and let me whoop him. I said, well, you're big enough to. <laughs> we both just died laughing. He was the sweetest man. I just love that man to death. But what I'm trying to say is, uh, I said, you're 
you're big enough to. Amen. I, I don't know who I can whoop him or not, but I like to hit him a few times. Uh, amen. And just get some frustration out on him. Amen. Listen, there's a real devil, uh, and there's real problems, uh, and there's deceptions, and there's lies, uh, and there's trickeries, uh, and there's false signs. How many have ever seen them old westerns, uh, amen, where they say, I'll meet you at Albuquerque. And they go up and they get a sign that says, Albuquerque, this away. Uh, you know, and the other direction says Dallas. And they turn that sign around, and when they get there on the horse, they stop and they said, Albuquerque, this away. So they follow the sign. Here they went to Albuquerque, but Albuquerque was that away. Hey, man, Bugs Bunny never would have found it that way. Hey, <laughs> Every time he's crashed out the top of the ground, he says, I'm an Albuquerque. But anyway, what I'm saying is, uh, amen, they would change those signs, uh, amen, to trick, uh, amen, the sheriff, uh, amen, so he had head in the wrong direction. Uh, that's exactly, exactly what the devil's doing, uh, amen, but trying to offer you an easier way, trying to offer you, amen, a more exciting way, amen, trying to offer you a way without a cross uh, and without a purpose uh, and without a destination, uh, amen, to get you headed out in the desert uh, in the wrong direction. Uh, and when you get to, uh, to Dallas, Texas, you're going to find out I'm not in Albuquerque. Amen. Or Albuquerque either. Amen. Uh, listen, the devil, amen, wants to deceive. And how many folks, uh, amen, that leans to their own understanding and they wind up, uh, amen, back in the same rut that they were in. Amen. Before that, they got saved. Well, Brother Jimmy, I believe it really got it. They won't get back in that rut anymore. I believe that they really got it. They won't get it for a long, long time. And it'll take a long time for the devil fighting and lying and tricking, uh, amen, for them to get there. But they can finally get there if they're rebellious uh, and they get uh, to fall in the wrong spirit uh, instead of the Holy Spirit, they can find themselves. Uh, amen, right back in the same rut they started in. When I was a, a boy growing up in the lower part of Allen County, uh, we lived in a, uh, a sharecropper's house. Did y'all, any of y'all know what a sharecropper's house is? Probably some of you living in one now, maybe, uh, farming, and you're uh, getting rent-free uh, if you'll uh, help them on the farm uh, and not charge anything. They won't charge you anything for living in that house rent-free. That's where we were when I was a boy up to I was about 10 years old. We lived in my uncle's house. and uh, But anyway, uh, we, we lived there and uh, didn't have the money. We was poor and we didn't have the money to buy gravel. It had been gravel probably 30, 40 years before that. This was back in the 60s. That's been a day or two ago. Amen. But anyway, uh, the, the, the mud and stuff and going in and out, back and to. And, uh, we had a car and we had a truck. Uh, um, and, and then the car laid down and all we had was a truck. But anyway, uh, we had a pickup truck, a 1955 Chevrolet, and we go in and out and in and out, going to my grandparents' house and going to uh, to town, as they called it, once a week to get groceries and so on and so forth. And by going back and to and not being much gravel, it started cutting down deeper and deeper and deeper. And if you wasn't careful, you would bottom out and be stuck. My dad got the truck struck one time because he tried to miss those ruts. He tried to pull over t uh, and not go in the ruts, but go over to the left a little bit. Boy, this will preach. He went over to the left a little bit and put those wheels uh, of the truck to the left of the of the left rut. That would throw the right ones, uh, amen, right in between the ruts uh, on the other high place of the road. Uh, and he'd done that a few times and done good. But he got in a hurry, amen, and got to sloshing water that was in uh, uh, around uh, some of that or somebody else that went through there. Anyway, it was real muddy on top. He got a little bit too close uh, in his judgment. Boy, won't this preach. Uh, amen, trying to make the judgment judgments of life, and he got a little bit too close to that old way that you used to live, amen, and, and trying to straddle them ruts is what he called it. He got a little bit too close, and he slipped over and fell off in them ruts. And when he did, the truck just stalled, and he put her down in low gear. Whom, whom. He is throwing water everywhere. But the truck didn't move. Won't that preach? There's some of you throwing a lot of water. You're slinging mud. 
but you ain't getting anywhere. Amen. You once knew the way, but today, amen, you have lost your way, and you need to get back on the straight and the narrow way. Amen. So he went to the bar and got the tractor and the log chain, and my mother that couldn't drive, <laughs> he got in a truck, and he kicked it out in neutral, hooked that chain to that, uh, that old farm truck with that tractor, and he said, all right, take your foot off the brake, and when I stop, you push that right pedal down. So he pulled us out, amen, of the ruts there, and we got out there where there was gravel, and he uh, went back and scotched it, uh, unhooked the chain and the tractor. He got back in the truck and went, went on to the house, amen. So therefore, he had been in the ruts. He would got out of the ruts, but he got a little bit too close, amen, making some bad judgments, getting in too big of a hurry, and he got so close to the edge that he slipped off in the rut that he once was in. And it stalled him. He wasn't going to heaven anymore. He wasn't headed to the home anymore. He wasn't headed to the place we lived anymore. He was sitting still. Uh, and another bad thing about it is he had to get out and wade in the mud, uh, amen, that was all around that soft spot there, right in the curve of the road, uh, amen, where everybody uh, tried to straddle them ruts. Man, there's people that get in a rut. You get in bad shape, amen. Some thinks I'm straddling this rut. I've made a bad decision or two but I'm still on my way and you'd be surprised at the people that stuck they stomp in their life right straight to the floorboard amen working their self to death and can't get ahead let me tell you something folks amen you get away from God amen you can uh, and stop paying your tithes and living for the Lord I'll tell you what will happen you'll get yourself in some of the awfulest financial binds you ever seen in your life amen and people will not amen try to do anything amen to correct that financial bind that they got in. How many knows if you max your credit card out every month, you're not going to get out of the hole? Amen. How many knows that just because you got more checks in the checkbook don't mean you got money in the checking account? Hey Amen. How many knows if you take in 300 a week, you can't spend 350 very long and stay on top? Hey man, how many knows you got to have a budget? I mean, you can't go to the grocery store and holler, give me, give me, my name is Jimmy and load the thing up. Amen. You got to go in there and get me one meat, one bag of potatoes. We eat beans last week and we'll eat them again next week. We got to divide this thing up. Amen. I've seen some people go to the grocery store and they got all this meat in the bottom and all this other stuff and on top they got every kind of sweet that can be thought of and you think, wow, man, there's high blood pressure and diabetes both right there in that cart. Hey, man, there's no doubt about that. And they go to pay for it and I thought, man, they'll have to lay down in the floor when they tell them how much they owe. And they'll say that would be $310. And I thought, poor thing. And they say, no problem, I got a card. See you again tomorrow. Hey, Amen. <laughs> Listen to what I'm saying. Uh, amen. So therefore, you can't always get uh, everything that you want. Uh, amen. Sometimes, uh, amen, you have to limit yourself. And those of you that gets a card, what little that you get, you need to be real careful. Amen. I know what is, I've been in a pinch a few times. Amen. You have to learn to, to use this vehicle and be discreet. Amen. With your money. And I, I feel sorry for people. Amen. That gets in trouble. There was a little girl. Um, I said a little girl. She wasn't a little girl. She's probably 20 year old. But when you get my age, that's just a baby. But anyway, she came over to our restaurant one day this week and she was carrying a brand new pair of shoes. And she walked into the restaurant and she went to asking two or three of my employees, do you know anybody can wear these shoes? I'll, I'll let you have them for $5. said, I, I need my shoes, but I'm out of gas, and I'm sitting right over here at the gas station. She said, I need some help. I feel sorry for her. I, so I went and reached my bill for her, and I, I gave her a $5 bill. She said, thank you so much. She said, here's your shoes. I said, honey, you take them shoes back with you. I don't need your shoes. She said, thank you. Now, I didn't say that for you to say, oh, boy, that was sweet or that was nice of you. That ain't what I'm saying. What I'm saying is there's people out there that are in real trouble. But I almost guarantee you, don't know the person, but I almost guarantee you that part of their problem is because they don't know how to manage 
They don't know how to save, and they don't know how to say no. And here's the thing with a lot of people. I didn't mean to get into this, but I feel the Spirit of the Lord leading me to go this way. You've not found the way. The way to follow Jesus, amen, is to listen to the Holy Spirit, go by the fundamental teachings of the Word of God, and God will take care of you. But you have to set your house in order. You have to organize, amen. You have to structure yourself, and you have to discipline yourself. I can't eat all the chocolate cake that I want. I'd kill myself. <laughs> I can't eat all the country ham that I want because I think you ought to eat it for some, for a breakfast, supper, and dinner, three slices, and then eat uh, red-eye gravy for dessert. But he'd a key if you ate that much of it. It's too much. Amen. You can't. You have to discipline yourself, and you can't go to the store because they got something pretty in there and buy it. How you gonna pay for it? I'll worry about that next week. And that's why America's the way it is today. I'll pay for it next month. Did you know it's okay to use a credit card if you can pay that thing off at the end of the month? and not have any charges, there's nothing wrong with that. But you start stock, stockpiling a bunch of stuff at 36% interest. Do you know how long it take you to pay off a $300 credit card at 36% interest? it take years, and only $300? Well, you'll have $2,500, $3,000 paid time you get that $300 bill uh, paid. Amen. And that's where a lot of people said there's no wonder why they can't get ahead. Uh, amen. You've got to holler, whoa, Sadie, hold back here on the reins. You stay out of Walmart if you can't beat this. Well, i got to have that. Go somewhere else and get it. Do without. I don't want to spend a lot of time on this, but I'm going to tell you something, folks. When you're poor, you've got to swallow some pride and live like a poor person. Amen. Until you can find the way and learn the principles of the Word of God, pay your tithes, amen, be faithful to God, and after a season of time, a while, on out in the future, not the next day after you pay your tithes one time, see that God will bring you out of that hole and get help. Go to the preacher. Go to someone. Get help to get out of that mess. It'll never get any better until you do, until you learn. Amen. And if you can't get your wife under control, sit your foot down. Take the checkbook away from her. Brother Jimmy, there'd be a divorce where you didn't have nothing, honey, to start out with. If they divorce you over setting your house in order, amen, you can't make enough money, amen, to satisfy them while a Fort Knox would go broke with some people. Because they don't have no discipline. And somebody has to take authority. You've got to take the bull by the horns or the wife by the ears <laughs> or the husband by the ears. Sometimes it's a man that does it. Amen? Amen. But sometimes one is a cheapaholic and the other is a spendaholic. And the cheapaholic has to put a harness on the spendaholic. Amen. And the spendaholic has to have grace and mercy. And they know in their heart that that's the only way we're going to make the boat float is for me to listen to the cheapaholic. You know what I've done as a boy growing up? We used to take a hog ringers and hog rings and ring up the side of the shoe because we didn't have the money or the time to quit everything we was doing, go to a dollar store and get another pair of shoes. Been there, done that. Nothing made me any matter. And after I wrung them things, get out in the dew, my socks would still get wet. Get to working out in the, in the dirt, and then in the dirt and stuff in the garden would, would go to work in, in, in between those uh, hog greens and work his way inside. And you had to take his shoe off every now and then and shake him pebbles and little pieces of dirt out. Your socks would be just as black as can be and by the end of the day. And you think, boy, this is sure bad, but it wasn't near as bad as walking on them rocks with nothing. I'm going to tell you something, folks. I don't encourage anybody to use hog greens to fix a shoe, but it's so much better than going barefooted in Kentucky working in a garden that you would not believe. I'll take hall greens and, and on my shoes, uh, amen, and, and, and socks, uh, amen, dirty, uh, and stopping every uh, little bit and empty them to get the pebbles out is to walk on them sharp rocks, uh, amen. When you live in Kentucky where you got two parts rock and one part dirt, you know what I'm talking about. Amen. 
Amen. That's the way that things are when you're poor and you were raised poor. You have to learn to live like a poor person. And We've been to the grocery store. Not today. I've been blessed and I'm doing okay financially. I don't need your sympathy and you don't need to send me any money personally. I'm doing okay. But what I'm saying is I've been to the place before that we walked into the grocery store. I probably could have got public assistance if the truth is known about it, but I didn't want it. I didn't look for it. I've always taught you pay your own way. If you can't afford it, leave it on the shelf. It gets bad enough, repent, get right with God, and he'll make a way. Amen. Some would rather be poor than down in sin. But anyway, what I'm saying is um, it makes it rough sometimes, but I want to tell you something. We went to the grocery store a few times, me and the wife and the kids, many years ago. She, I wouldn't. She, I was the only one working. She wasn't working at, at that time. I think the mama ought to stay home with the kids and raise them if you can. That's just my opinion. You can have yours. But I felt like she needed to, and she did till the youngest son was already in high school before she started working to help out. But what I'm saying is it got bad there for a while. I remember many times having one of them little dollar calculators from Walmart. And I'd, I'd uh, have the calculator in my hand, and I'd say, now we've got $40. We can spend it on anything we want, and that's all that we can spend. And when that $40 runs out, you put it back on the shelf. I'd say, what do you, what's the biggest thing you got to have? She said, I ain't got no flour in the house. Well, I'd say, you got to have flour. Just get a flour. And I put a dollar twenty nine plus, and I go get me a bag of sugar for three forty nine. I'm just making those prices up. Whatever it was, I put three forty nine. I get the total on that. I said, okay, we still we still got several more. We got about thirty more dollars we can spend here, thirty three or whatever was left, and we go somewhere else. And man, every now and then, when I, we, I'd worked a bunch of extra overtime and got a little extra pay, I'd say, we got to take a calculator with us, but this week we get to get meat. And I said, I ain't had no meat in a long time. I tell you what. And it wasn't a steak. We didn't buy steaks. Mm -mm. I'm talking about get us a pork chop. Amen. Get us some pork chops. Or we get something, something like that or a beef roast and let her cook it. Or get us a picnic ham or something like that. Man, when I come in to extra $10, $12, I didn't have. I know what it's like to squeeze the buffalo nickel to the buffalo balls. Hey, man, I know what it's like. Been there and done that. Hey, man, have to carve and carve and cut back and squeeze and pinch, hey, man, to be able to make it. But you know what? If you've got a fight in you and you've got the desire to exist, amen, and you'll do what you ought to do like you're supposed to, sooner or later you won't ever be a Donald Trump, but you come out of your hole and you'll be better than you've been before. Man, what a message today. I preached it all in one sermon today, but I've just tried to follow how the Lord led me to preach today. A lot of problems is because people have lost their way or they failed to find the right way. Are you in the way? Now, I'm not talking about in the way of sinners, but I'm talking about in the bright, in the shining way. Are you ready to meet God? Have you found the way that's, that's providing for your family? See, what we don't understand is the Word says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all His righteousness, and these other things shall be added. That means given. Not sending money into the uh, big preacher somewhere, but God will make a way where there seems like there is no way. There'll be a fish float to the top of the water with a coin in it, enough to pay both you and Uncle Sam. It happened before in the scripture. You can go to the closet like I have and find a $20 bill in your coat and not have enough gas money to be able to start a revival. You know that's going to give you money when you got there but didn't have the gas money to go to that revival, you done told the pastor that I'm a-coming. But, Lord, I, it ain't going to look right for me to get out here and go to asking neighbors to borrow money. And I went to looking through my, my coat pocket. I found a $20 bill, and I said, look at here. We can go all the way to Louisville on this. And I said, they'll take up a love offering and give me a little bit, and we'll have enough to make it all week. By the end of the week, we made it, ate real good, had just a few dollars left over. 
amen, of all my expenses. So I gained the ground. you got to put your faith and trust in God. I don't know where that $20 bill come from, but it was in my suit coat. I know what God can do for you. If you've got a heart to love other people and to reach out, God will make a way. And our ministry is doing better than it's done in a while. And it's doing good because I'm not asking for money. I'm giving you an opportunity to give if God leads you to. Amen. And I'm not telling you, you so into Jimmy Wilson's ministries, you're going to gain a whole lot of money. I'm going to almost guarantee you it ain't going to help you one bit financially to so into my ministry. But I tell you what it may do. It may keep some old boy out of hell. It may keep some girl, amen, from uh, setting herself short and giving her body to some lustful man somewhere, amen. It may cause some children, amen, to stand behind the door and say, I don't know what happened to my daddy, but he don't smack me anymore. It may not cause, amen, you to get a brand new key, a car keys to a brand, a keys to a brand new car, but it might cause you and your neighbor has been fighting for years to meet out next to the a corn patch and hug one another and say, I'm sorry, would you come over to our house tonight for supper? We got chicken. Amen. See, the Lord has a way of touching your life. Stand with us, if you would, while we get a song of invitation. To those watching my television live streaming, God bless you. Thanks for watching. Live streaming crowd will be back tonight, 645, Lord willing.